Good evening. You're on hour 25. Yeah, good evening. Um, one thing I was thinking about is uh, the problem of how people who are all seemingly intelligent coming up with different solutions or different um, answers, different problems, and especially when I've been watching, since this is a political season, watching politicians, I've kind of identified a, a problem I call white boy disease. And that's that narrowness of perspective that comes from being a member of the dominant group. Oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I un I understand being a member of a non-dominant group. Yeah. Uh, I I definitely am sensitive to that. Uh, Dr. Landers is champing at the bit here. <laughs> Go for it. No, it, it was when you were saying that uh, that people can't agree, particularly when you mentioned Congress, I believe, or or uh, our august uh, governing body. Uh, the thing is, now consider this. Now, if we have a hundred billion neurons, and each neuron uh, has between a thousand and ten thousand connections, so that we're talking about uh, the brain having maybe a hundred trillion to a thousand trillion synaptic connections or possible brain states at any given moment, is it any wonder that they can't get together and agree on anything <laughs> well i think it's primarily a matter of point of view yeah and like i say i think it's that white boy point of view well it's one of them then there's the rich boy point of view well, uh, yes, you know I and then there's the too. heterosexual male point of view and, they, and there are all kinds of points of view and they yeah. overlap yeah but when i say about that dominant uh well this is a point of view that i say comes from being a member of the privileged group, which sure. is basically the white, rich, heterosexual male. Well, the trouble is, I know yeah. some white, rich, heterosexual males, and most of them feel oppressed, too. I mean, <laughs> nobody really, very few people seem to really feel that they're at the top of the heap. Everybody feels that there's somebody who's who's champing at them, clawing at them, trying to get them or holding them down. Virtually everybody in life feels that somebody else is the one who's got uh, the prize. I would like to one, one last time reject the racist component of Association of Intelligence and Heredity. Um, in the spring of 1653, Pope Innocent X condemned a pernicious heresy called Jansenism. Uh, in the winter of 1969, the same doctrine appeared as Jensenism. Professor Jensen at the University of California at Berkeley, he was the, um, his article, How Much Can We Boost IQ and Scholastic Achievement, was mailed to every member of the um, uh, National uh, uh, Academy of Science by the eminent white Anglo-Saxon uh, Nobel laureate William Shockley. Oh boy! Nobel laureate and racist. He invented the transistor, but he and and uh, Jensen tried again to bring up this myth that race and intelligence are are connected. Uh, they were racist. They were wrong. I'd like to close the book on that. Oh yeah. Okay, listen. We need to go. We need. Okay. We got a whole this bank of people here. I need to get to. If you don't mind. What? The, the main thing is, I think that you can kind of overcome this by not questioning what you don't believe, because we all know what sets off our BS detectors, but question what we do believe. I think that's a very good idea. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Socrates considered himself wise, not because he knew more than the other citizens of Athens, but because he knew that he did not know, whereas they thought they knew. Mm. I kind of <laughs> like that. Good evening. You're on hour 25. Hello. Hello. You're on hour 25. Yeah, that's the second. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, I read an article uh, quite a while back. I don't remember what it was, what uh, magazine it was in. But uh, what do, what effect do hallucinogenics have on the brain and intelligence? Uh, do you have anything to say about that? I don't know of any hallucinogenics that increase intelligence. Some of them provide some interesting perspectives, but there's a real downside to most of them if you're not very, very, very careful. Right. Most hallucinogenics work on the limbic system. There are receptors in the limbic system for them. And again, that's below the neocortex, essentially. You're talking about uh, non-intelligence uh, centers, essentially. You're talking about the emotion centers. And uh, you are not going to boost intelligence yeah. through LSD. If you're going to take them to have fun, that's your business. If you're going to take them to try to increase your intelligence, you're probably kidding yourself. But l let me indirectly agree with Timothy Leary, who I personally find a very interesting guy to talk to one-on-one, -on -one, very interesting person. Uh, Timothy Leary says the fundamental right is the right to control the state of your own consciousness. Yes. I agree with that. My bias is I don't want my consciousness to be occupied with useless sensory diversion. I want to have a consciousness of intelligence and creativity, and every human being has the right 
to be intelligent and creative. Well, actually, there is something interesting about this. Is the mind illusion? You know, because a lot of, uh, of what we perceive of as being mind is just apparently a construct. For example, we see in two dimensions, I, uh, light hits the retina in two dimensions, we see in three dimensions. And in fact, the lens flips the image so that the light arrives to the uh, the uh, retina backward, and yet we see right side up. So, 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 so the world is actually backwards. You know? Yeah, and when you take something like LSD, you may feel as if your horizons are expanding, etc., but it's, it's truly not doing that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We need to go on. Okay. Good evening. You're in hour 25. Oh, hi. Uh, Jack Biggs here. Hi, Jack. Yeah, I just want to... Two things you mentioned earlier about breathing a p uh, pure oxygen. Well, the early astronauts in the Mercury and, and Gemini programs breathe pure oxygen in their cabins, but it was at a very low pressure, about five pounds a square inch. Uh-huh. Isn't that responsible for that explosion that yeah, killed a couple of Yeah, that's what killed the people on, on the Apollo 1. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, and the second thing about unexplainable phenomena, I think uh, the people who promote these things are speaking with their egos. I can't explain it, therefore it is unexplainable. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the difference, uh, calling, some, saying that I saw a UFO is quite separate from saying I saw a flying saucer from Mars. Yeah, Two different exactly. things. Okay, thanks a lot, Jack. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. You're on Hour 25. Oh, I had a strange experience when I was a young man. I went to work in a shipyard and later on in aerospace. And I just seemed to know what to do. I had no knowledge of anything, yet I seemed to know everything. I don't huh. know wh where the knowledge came from because I didn't study it. I had a friend of mine who... Uh, who uh, knew trigonometry, gave me a 10-minute course uh, over the telephone, and with that I was able to do all the trig problems. I think that that's one of the truly fascinating things that, that happens from time to time with human beings, and there are uh, lots of instances of this sort of thing happening where people just learn things much more rapidly or seem to have pre-knowledge of things. Yeah, I, I had no, no knowledge of pipe fitting whatsoever. I went to work in a shipyard. And I well, you know, Plato suggested that we don't learn anyway, that we merely remember what it is we already knew when we were born and just sort of conveniently agreed to forget that all teaching is a matter of remembering things we already knew. In, in fact, that's the, the basic tradition in Hindu and Buddhist thought. Uh, in, in the Hindu or Buddhist mindset, the doctrine of Advaita or non-duality is to say that the individual is an illusion, that the normally perceived reality is an illusion, that your, your true essence is something which is uh, timeless and transcendental. You're talking about tapping into the, what they call the Akashic Records. Exactly. Yes. This so is the, the universal mind, universal wisdom, God consciousness. It is possible that there is a sort of communication, the 11th monkey, you know. Yeah. Actually, thing. it's easier to tap into the group mind. Yeah, the group <laughs> mind, that's right. I'll probably only do it with a lotto tomorrow. <laughs> with a lotto tomorrow, yeah. Well, good luck to you, sir. Anyway, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Good evening, we're in hour 25. Hi, is it me? Yes. Oh, great. Um, last guy reminded me of uh, something else I want to talk to you about, and that is that... We're real short on time. We are remembering. Um, we're bringing baggage from previous lives through the bardo to this life. Um, there are a, a lot of people on, on this idea. planet who agree with that point of view. You know, yeah, it, you didn't touch upon the idea that we are perhaps and probably spirits in the material world. Well, the reason I wouldn't touch knowledge. upon that is because it, it it isn't easy to prove or disprove that or if it is true to utilize that to a greater or lesser degree right now. There are some uh, meditative techniques which t allow you to tap into what they consider to be your intuitive self or your higher mind or whatever. Uh, that's not directly in the purview of this show, but if people who are interested in finding out such techniques could visit the Bodhi Tree bookstore. There are a lot, there's a lot of very excellent information about that sort of thing. I would conclude by saying that there's, there's no contradiction between these, that on, on the one hand you can say that um, uh, the reality that we perceive is strictly an illusion, but Stephen Hawking said that by understanding the equations of gravity and electromagnetism, you understand the mind of God. Okay, thank you. We've got to go on. Good evening. You're on hour 25. Uh, hi. I'm enjoying it immensely. I, I've, I've got a problem, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm a high school student. Yes. I'm still a senior. And uh, about a year ago, uh, I, by the way, I live for science. Science is my life. Okay. And about a year ago, uh, it seemed that I, I lost some kind of intelligence that was inherited or I lost some kind of comprehension. So as right now, the most math and most... I was never great in math, and most things seem an incomprehensible blur to me. Okay, my suspicion would be one of a couple of different things. 
either you are hitting a level of difficulty in your studies that you hadn't hit before. Well, I'm studying for the SAT, yeah. Okay. Or, you know, and at the same time, you are hitting a level of complexity in your emotional life, which is draining off some of your focus. My suspicion is that you're probably feeling a lot of emotional pressure at this point in your life because you're about to embark on a, an adventure called college, taking your SATs, things like that. Y what you may be suffering is the result of performance pressure. Performance pressure. Performance pressure. You need to learn to relax. Well, you got to. Maybe you should tell that to the institutions in which we learn. Absolutely, but you can go out and learn techniques of relaxation. I mean, I just, I just would kind of suggest that. Um, it is one of the things that often does hit people when they start thinking about things like the college they're going into. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're completely out of time. They're telling us that we have to leave. <laughs> yes, they're telling us we have to leave. Don't so worry, thank you be very happy. Much. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy, and get smart now. Well, I favor the program. Okay. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to say to that last listener, once again, that the Bodhi Tree Bookstore, there are lots of books and tapes and techniques of how to relax so that you can utilize whatever maximum uh, mental resources you have. You know, the board is still lit up here. People really want to be on the air. I am so sorry. We are just, we're just out of time. Let's continue this again sometime. Um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, clearly this is a subject that people want to hear more about and think more about. So let's think about this intelligently, and if we can come to some more useful conclusions about how people can study more effectively and use their brains and what it is that's happening on this level, let's definitely do this again if we can provide a service with it, because clearly there is a desire for it. I think so. So, um... John, thank you very much once again for contributing to the show. And thank you. Richard, always a pleasure. Wonderful having you here. Uh, thank you to all the members of the group mind who contributed your thoughts and have helped make the show a success. And uh, until next time, this is Steve Barnes saying good night, Mike, wherever you are.